According to MUTCD, you have to have the sign policy in place by June the 14th. So this takes care of that. Actually, that's first and there's just policies for the break out here. We can. If they need a favor or something like that, they can come. Yeah. So. This looks like it's just like, oh, just stick it here because really, look, they look really high on it. Well, you know, the ground was hard when they were doing that. You, you, you're trying to get my dandruff apart. No, I'm not. It's, 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 it's driving me nuts. Okay, I just. <laughs> yeah, for we, yeah, so we. So you're addressing the issue. <laughs> yeah, one way at a time. Yes, okay, we are. Okay, okay. Part of it was just so dry. Yeah. Close yeah. Me. I mean, I bet that ground was hard to and then we, we re-tamped them. And yeah. And some of them look really nice. Yeah. And some of them have been pushed over already. Yeah, and some of them have been shot and ran over already. You know, a couple of South and staff are on the 911s. We went quick creeping in. Got tired of this. They just kept on the ground. That's all they do. It's not bothering me, but it's not in anybody's way. If you're really that bored, come around. I can find something for your dude. <laughs> so, do we have to reissue the resolution on this? Or no, we've never just had a resolution. Oh, we can't. We, we know. So, okay, I'm just reading that. Okay. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2014-11. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2014-11. All in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. Motion to adopt. Right. Really. Exactly right. I did, I did get him a letter sent and I need to call him and talk to him and I'll try to get something set up for him. He's never been to the phone now. He should have got the letter. Okay. I'm going to call him a couple of co-op. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll send the letter to Scott. Oh. I'll ask him to come back to the floor. He's had ample time to have him and run you up and go through the channels and he just got there. So I'll that's the engineer, Pratt Division? Yes. Yeah, I'd like to say something to Craig real fast. Sure. Out what we're going to do. <coughs> yeah. That's why we advertise a little bit of the excavator bucket. And Chad, the Kansas Durst, is pretty close to what Chad said. I make a motion to allow uh, Kansas Dirt Incorporated to purchase the smooth mouth excavator bucket for $1,600. On second? Okay, we have a motion and second to sell the excavator bucket to Kansas Dirt for $1,600. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Sure. I'm going to make that. I'm going to bring up the monthly bill. I need the black 
cost of it. That last one's for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a matter of opinion. <laughs> I want to influence your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to justify it. <laughs> yeah, how do you, how do you write that? <laughs> yeah. I'll make a motion we uh, increase. Phil's salary from range 14 step 7 to range 14 step 8 as the last step increase. <laughs> second. Okay, we have a motion second to increase Phil from range 14 step 7 to range 14 step 8. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm Thank reaching you. the top. <laughs> you find the reach. Well, it's all downhill from here. Yeah, it's right. Right. just the pinnacle. <laughs> um, we've got several 4x4s and stuff to do. When we took all of them, when we replaced them, there's about 450 of them. Yeah. I would like to sell them a lot. I've got several other things. You want me to make a list of them and bring it up to you guys to yeah. look at it yeah. before we do this? Just put it on seal bed? Yeah, I'll use that or a lot of you know, or something. Yeah. I mean, we've got like a single more than our choice to prevent more and uh, have a bigger, another more that we don't to use. I mean, and we've got a snap of more. I mean, it's just some stuff that sits around there we don't use, we don't need, and it's just. It's just get some of the snap or more work. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It was probably 15 years old when the work was there. Was any decision made about the impoundment when they were going to do it? No, we were just talking about it, but they need to get the ball rolling to do that. Sure, when they started I think so. That's what she got said. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, he didn't put stuff in our yard because his was full. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So maybe this list at all. Do it at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 Is that normally a sealed bids on an endowment or is it an auction? That's what they or did or last time. Or they, they did seal bids. Put it on purple wave or whatever. Yeah. We do put some of that stuff that the season it goes on purple wave too. A lot of counties use purple wave for everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, I'm gonna try probably, it. Probably do more we'll get a better deal on the four by four so yeah. you know, that the other stuff I don't know. Yeah, because we bought the uh, it's kinda of not the subject of the uh, counties on purple wave, they Kylo County had a old metal shop table from the pictures look pretty nice. But <laughs> uh, we paid $75 and I picked it up that wasn't quite that. Was yes. It wasn't quite that. It has some disclaimer in there, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> but $75. So. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's living good. <laughs> Let Linda do it here and see what he wants. Yeah. He <laughs> <laughs> makes a living doing it, I guess. Yeah. He yeah. gets a lot of that stuff bought and sold off. That you wouldn't think anybody else would ever want to do. Other than that, we're pulling up some, some of those that are probably in this. On the sewer here, going north out of the sewer, we're pulling some of that up there. I'm trying to get that built up in some sort of shade. Yeah. At least it rained out there. Yeah. And, yeah, for a little while, we've already yeah. lost part of the moisture, so we're. We're over there. We're we're up there, and we're over on Zenith. Right? I had to pull one of the trucks off and see if we start walking where it's back. Get him, get him made down. But hopefully, yeah. they just got some flight up our ground. Yeah. They flatten out, and they go walk and they get concrete. Uh, it's, it's just yeah, it's, it's just cool. part of the circle. Yeah. Okay. So that's some of the stuff we're doing. I can't see the moment until it's 
starts jumping a lot. Which sewer grid? Coming from the, the, east? the north south part right now, and we'll we'll take a look at the east west part of it. Then. For Ryan Spring does ditches, it looks pretty good. Yeah, he got a pretty good perk on mm -hmm. some of it. The perk considering how dry yeah. everything mm -hmm. was. Because I'm sure when things are dry, it can never be working for yeah. it. I will take it and show it to them. So. Golly. <laughs> is that a pen that has been not marked right there? <laughs> no. Actually, that's a pretty good deal. Hmm. Believe it or not. But like I told Kurt, our art should be shot through many gallons of oil. It's a, how many? Three million gallons. Really? It surprised me when I figured that that much oil would work through it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Times how much a gallon? Yeah. Well, well from, from the time that started, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's went up pretty good from, from 98. So, what's our oil in there? In today's two. The, the kind that we shoot through there is two dollars and a nickel. Two. Two dollars and a nickel. No, it actually comes in the, in the oil and we haul it and then and then it in here. So then it takes a long time to just put some glue down like that. But we're going to have that probably sit.
we have the trucks on the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, have the want. trips down. <laughs> yeah, I haven't turned the roads that much. Yeah. So how many gallons does it take to do a mile? A mile, um, basically a 24 foot of road, a mile you're going to shoot about, at 2700 is what we shoot. It takes about 3875 years. Now, you, you, you get about a mile through the horizontal spectrum. What's that stuff weigh? Yeah, uh, like, it's just a little bit lighter than water, oh. so it's like 8.1, 8.12, something like that. No? No. It, will, it, it is mixed with water, so. Yeah. I mean, you can cut the application right back, but then there's all the kind of material as well. And and so they want you to make, blend that two inches deep or three inches? Oh, on, on the uh, magnesium? Uh -huh. uh, he said about an inch and a half, an inch and a half, and we'll scaff iron and open that up and then an inch and a half, and then blend it now, and then we'll go okay. there, and we'll go for it. I hope it works. I really do. And I, I did talk to him. Yeah. I have no, no, they, no. They, they were. I, I said this is what they wanted to try, and I says it's worth one more try. Yeah. And we'll see. I said. Well, yeah, because I mean, even when you drive through there, I did the other day. I mean, you can still tell a difference in the dust behind you. Oh, this yeah. is before the rain. Yeah. You know. So, I mean, it, what you did before helped a little. Still helping. Yeah. But it's still dust. It, it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, and then we put that clay in there. Right? Yeah. And it's, it, I mean, that helped. But right. Then, then when it got wet, that clay was slick. Well, you, know, you, you can't let people be sliding off in the ditch. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The stuff you did well yesterday was pretty good stuff. Yeah. yeah I think some more of that. Yeah. Is he done with that? Oh, uh, he told us, I think so. Yeah, I think some of that in my yard. Talk to, talk to Bernie, I'm sure. That was a good yeah, stuff. right down and it wasn't, it was clay, but it wasn't greasy, you know. So it was a little more in Yeah. A lot of sand mixed in it. No, it was like this stuff in the middle of the pool. The food that we used over for the back of the day. It just gets so slippery. Yeah. Some yeah. sand mixed in the middle No, I don't think so. I think it went pretty good. It's, I can't believe that clay layer is in there, but it is. It's kind of, kind of weird. I've never seen it. It's orange-ish. Mm -hmm. You go out there and run a film and go. Yeah, so well, you, you, get, from, yeah. you get 10 foot down and it's hard to pick it up there. Orange, reddish, or a whole lot of three to two. If you have that yeah. in the bottom of the pond, if you don't, if you got the gray stuff, it won't hold it well. Yeah. Yeah, that red stuff can be good too. It's too much to go off super quick. At my house, the bottom of the pond looked like that. Behind my mom's house, that pond, it's just that the black, black stuff. stuff and it sucks water down there like crazy. Oh, no, we went up. We went down to the golf course and we, got, we went through the bottom of something. And it it's just so like a sponge. Yeah. It just you know, fills up and there's a day or two later it's gone. And that night don't help much. No. You can pour it in more and more. We've done that with our mom and dad's pond dump truck loads in one spot and it's filled with that too. Yeah. Oh, guys, I'm going to use salt. Yeah. I don't know. I have that around. We've done that with Jerry Long's pond. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, because, yeah, that's who did that. And then somebody said to feed cattle in there. Oh. oh, that don't work very good there. I've done that. I <laughs> feed cattle in there and then it'll stop it. Yeah. Okay. Just draw and stuff down and see what all the uh, winter things. We took the fence out, but the cows in it to drink for a couple years and didn't go like that. You know what takes a bad, bad spot or two? I mean, it'll still go right down the block. Mm -hmm.
That would be fun. They got the shop. Really? <laughs> That's good. That we were supposed to do with. Let's see. Um, How many years ago was that? <laughs> He read it for us, so it came to us, and we had to. I think why he did it is because we had to take the boxes down to him and, and ship, you know, ship it out. But we made him a discount, so. Well, it's cheaper than what I was going to do for one month before, so. I'd like to take that Do those have to be inspected every once in a while? Or uh, the batteries just, they, every year. Every year. Yeah, they're usually the batteries have got a five year shelf life. So, but they'll need to be rotated out every five years. So you don't have a technician come in and make no. sure it's calibrated. The Zoll monitors are different. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The AEDs, no. Um, our state inspector actually inspects ours every time he comes out every year to make sure that they're operational. If batteries need to be replaced, well, to make, to make sure there's no red X. Mm -hmm. I was surprised when they were doing so bad. We were expecting Panasonic. No, I wasn't expecting. I was expecting something else, but it wasn't a Duracell battery. Something elaborate. These are kind of little camera batteries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There were Duracell batteries that were made for the Panasonic. You were living through. Yes. He probably didn't inspect the batteries. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Protocols, um, which you guys will probably I should have brought it today, but um, they're now taking long spine boards out of the equation, and they want us to use something that's called a combi board now, and it's actually a scoop stretcher um, combined with a long spine board. They are, however, like six hundred and seventy dollars a piece, so we're looking at sixty-seven hundred dollars to get in in tune with this new protocol that. Um, St. Francis and Westland Medical Center have actually put it into play, and Kansas State Board of EMS has actually adopted the new protocol. So we have it in our books, uh, so we'll have to maybe get put here shortly. Anyway, you guys heads up on that. Um, Aimless license renewal, we just did, um, and we are good for a year there. State inspection just came through last Wednesday, and we had near perfect marks. We had one light. One light go out on the unit, and it was a rotating bulb fixed on site, so everything was there good. The thing with that is, anything goes wrong, they can put a unit out like that until you get it fixed. So we're lucky, lucky we missed that. Uh, EMT class is done officially. We have six that are going to be testing in Hayes on June 14th. Two supposed to, no one just moved to Stafford, so we're going to have two over there at Stafford, um, two in St. John, two in Maxwell. So we're looking at. Um, let you guys know we had a fire on Sunday. I don't know if you guys heard about it, but um, we were out until 6 o'clock in the morning on Monday morning. Um, Gavin and I were exhausted. We were taking care of the firefighters, giving them water, uh, making sure they were in rehab, but we were tired. And so we actually were out of the office until noon on Monday while we were resting. Um, I did that more as a safety issue in case we had to transfer to Wichita or anything that we wouldn't be able to, to make it. So I would let you guys be aware of that. Um, that's the only time we've done that. Uh, kind of new to us, only having two people there. But I wanted your guys' thoughts on it. We don't seem to make it a, you know, we won't make it a... you got to sleep sometime. Right, <laughs> right. But I didn't want, I wanted you guys to know in case people drive by and go, well, no one was an EMS on Monday morning. Why not? Well, that's why. So. That was a storm that day. Hmm? Night of the storm. Yeah, it was started out. South of Mm -hmm. I didn't hear about that. I was trying to think where we even went. Um, where were we at? I thought it was over by Hudson somewhere. Oh, I, don't know. I think it was. It was <laughs> over by Hudson. It was the middle of the night. It was. I was paged out of my sleep. You know. It wasn't so was the day. Ah. I got there. I called dispatch. I said, "Where is it?" And they told me how to go. I thought it was south of the rest area. 
they were talking about a fire right before the storm got here. This was this was it at was one north. one o'clock in the morning, and we were there till six a.m. Oh, really? Yeah, it was a trailer house fire. Actually, they caught fire by a uh, lightning strike. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, it fully engulfed when we got there, and it was just yeah, it was a crazy mess. Okay, and then the budget. Looking at these, there's a few changes, or there's some line items I wanted to just kind of discuss with you guys. The telephone internet line, the 4311, we no longer have internet in Stafford and Maxville, so I went ahead and reduced that $1,000. Um, the 4314 is the EMS, the education and training, which actually I'll, I'll get to that one in a minute. The 4315 is the dues and subscriptions. On that, we have 15 techs that need to renew their license, which is $30 by the end of this year. And it's $450, and we have been picking up those fees years past. The line item will be negative 352.75 because of those. Um, and then there's going to be in 2015, there's eight techs with the $30 renewal fee of $240 plus your license renewal fee every year, that's $260, and also the prior deficit of the $852.75, um, which is why I actually increased that line item to $1,000 to cover everything. Um, the 4333, the professional services, the EMS and structure fees, as I was looking, they've been taken out of this line item in the past, the 4333. We have $600 per student, and the State Board of EMS will actually issue checks to the service because the service signs contracts with State Board of EMS stating that they are responsible for these students for that year. We have to report back in a year and say whether they fulfilled their hours or not. The line item has been taken out. It was only for um, $27.65, so it's always going to put us in the red. So I was looking to pay the EMS instructor fees and any EMT stuff out of 4314, so we have $8,000 to work with on that. And there's only $85 taken out of it this year. Um, the education training is typically for anybody that goes like out of state paramedic training. We don't have anybody in paramedic class, but if we had a full timer that wanted to go to paramedic, we would just not do EMT class and let all that money go to paramedic education for the two years. And um, on 4511, we have our last ambulance payment this year, and we don't own it. So we got that money, the 2,935. We just kind of go into other areas and then. Left us with 312,700. Very good. The building is in pretty good shape, though. Um, yes, I'm actually going to bring come back next week with the. Uh, we actually collected 14,000 for the last month, but that way you guys can have that there. Um, getting some of the runs, to be perfectly honest with you, I had a. Uh, crew meeting, crew captain meeting Tuesday, and they brought me a couple runs that were from the very end of the month that I need to get them put it in, that way I can get you guys that report. Um, and then I'll give you that report. I've got ARSI report laying on my desk, and I need to go through it. I like to be able to explain the, I need to understand it and explain it to you guys too. So, we'll have that next week, I'll get that. Um, going out of date or whatever. The 1996, the oldest one that we dropped to uh, collision or whatever, um, I do believe that that one will need to be replaced at some point. Um, but the 2003 is actually in worse shape than the 1996 <coughs> because it's got a lot of electrical problems. So we will have to at some point look at getting another ambulance. And it's a 2003? Yeah, it's the, the one that St. John has, the blue and white one. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of electrical problems. I mean, it runs, the 1996 one actually runs better. Um, but it hasn't, we've never had a slide on it. You know, it's never, it, it runs, but it's, it's shaky. 
What's the electrical problem? It's like windows? We don't have an inverter on it. Um, we need to get an inverter, which we could look into inverter. It's like $1,500, I think, for an inverter, but get one for that. And that's more for transfers if we need um, additional power for like running an IV pump or to plug it or zone longer into those issues. Sometimes with batteries, we can't pull that one out and check it without leaving it running because if we do, we're going to. The other ones don't do that. Yeah. So there's something, and it's been in Marty's and been through electrical. I mean, they can't find anything wrong. <laughs> hmm. So, as Gavin puts it, it's just a limit. It's just a limit. <laughs> and I'm like, but it, it, it's operational, yeah. but it's, it's a limit at some point, you know? So. And we get a little. Wind generator and third on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the Send the inverter. Hey, get some speed. Get, get, it, up to get it up to 65. That would give us a reason we're in 1039 all the time. Yeah. <laughs> solar panel on the yeah. Okay. Hey. See you later. All right. Thank you. Don't forget to radio. I got it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> We approve May 7th, 2014, two sentences of minutes. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the uh, non meeting minutes of May, or, so, yeah, May 7th. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion. You could say that. <laughs> Why, why do we have to do that? It's just a notation for the record. So oh, wait, 100 years from now. Because the auditors go through every set, set of minutes, and if they see that we skipped mm -hmm. May 7th, they're going to want to know why. Why can't we just say we didn't have me? Well, but am I going to remember <laughs> next May why you didn't meet May 7th of 2014? I, I understand. Yeah. I've done been through this before. I understand. <laughs> Just trying to do my job. I know. All I is okay. The K work guys got by. I don't know. It's a pool that several counties are in. Um, I don't know if it's something we want to look at. I told him I'd give you the information, and you could look it over. There's like sixty some counties in it now. It's a pool that. You know, yeah. Well, I've heard good about it, and I've heard bad about it, so. Um, but you don't have to. What, you know, in the past, we've discussed this about NACO. Do you recall what, um, why we didn't join, or? NACO is that National Association of County Organizations. Yeah. We, we were members for years, and the dues were high, and we were getting What does it sound like now? It's like $300. Mm -hmm. Someone said you'd get more information out of them than you would Kansas Association of Counties. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so yeah. 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 On this one? Yes. And then but the uh, NACO was had a prescription card for employees. Employees. Really? Yeah. The K work? K work they said and I noticed they said this kind of prescription service, but I thought a gal that I heard present that one time said that she could save a lot of money to counties because they could use that prescription and get a lot cheaper prescriptions for their engineers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what she, I talked to her afterwards. She said, too, you ought to talk to them and get them back. That, that would save you some money. That's all I have. Yeah. The service data service was in twenty six of thirteen thirteen for prisoner. Yes. What's the deal with? Um, well, yeah, I'm not question what I, what I'm questioning is why so long. I know. Who is that doctor? Regional Hospital. I remember that we're looking at that. You want the check number? No. We're recess. We've been waiting and waiting. This new vehicle mm -hmm. it arrived. Did you ask me about the story? The other day? <laughs> They'll blow his top. No, I won't. <laughs> no, I won't well, when they called us about it, it had 60 hell dance. Oh. Plus, they dropped probably a chain or a boom off the transport truck in the middle of it. So we refused. Refused it. And they have found a replacement in Colorado Springs. Which is like Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't blow my top. I understood that the panel, well. I may have said choice words, no. but not to the car dealership. Um, they did locate another vehicle. It is in, since we got a commission meeting this morning, we're going to get it. It is actually going to be an email still that he sent Roughly. Um, it has the same options that I ordered, but um, it does not have the eco boost motor when I, what I ordered in particular, in particular, but does have the ready for the road package, so it still comes with some lights and the siren box. Um, the invoice on that vehicle, as it sits, was $32,261.41. Uh, our trade in was $9,000. Uh, fleet concession was $2,194, which making the total price of that vehicle. $21,067.41 and the original vehicle we ordered was $24,625. So it, it, like I said, it doesn't have the EcoBoost motor, but it, from the guys that I have talked to that have that particular motor and that patrol vehicle, they're just as good as anything else. He said the car is It's a It's Oh. They wouldn't got it They wouldn't got it yesterday. Oh. They didn't even locate on it. No, it's like that. It's and it'll it'll have right, right, roughly right, right out of thousand miles. miles. <laughs> they had, kind of like what they used for Doug's car or whatever. They use it as a demo. Uh, Not so much to let other agencies drive it, but just to let other sure agencies down. look at it, what Ford was offering and stuff like that. And with that, yeah. and the trip back, it's going to be right out of thousand miles. So. Because the replacement vehicle at a delivery time was unknown. Uh, yeah. How's that Tahoe working? Is it pretty good? It is outstanding. Yeah. I mean, if it was a regular patrol vehicle for us, there would be a couple things that would change. One that I would probably uh, make sure we had it at a four wheel drive. Yeah. But for what we are doing for running back and forth, and you know, and I actually had to run hot with it the other day on a call, and then last night for a call, I was on the 
and it's working out real well. So it's been kind of a blessing during this whole little uh, vehicle exchange issue. So I know it needs to go back to the fire department. We've got to get decals on it. We have our decals work, but uh, we haven't marked it quite yet since we've been kind of around the back before. So. But it has worked out great. <laughs> so this new one had hail damage plus the dent. Plus a large dent. On these oh, yeah. Of the dent. <laughs> <laughs> they called me and said, hey, good news, your vehicle's in, but the bad news is you need to come along. Well, that's the only they replaced the hood and everything else, and then pull the dents and stuff. But I, I, I was contacted by Tom and said, well, I'm not going to pay a full price for a round here vehicle. I mean, you, you buy a new vehicle, you want it. And so we said, no, and Jeff was the same one. We did, so we refused to have repairs. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and it's not on Rap Baird Motors. I mean, this yeah. falls back on the transport company. Yeah. And needless to say that I thought I was upset. No, <laughs> they were 10 times worse. Yeah, so they moved it from Kansas City that hailstorm last yeah. week. Uh, they got caught somewhere. So the new one will be white, so it's over. Which, that's another issue. But. <laughs> pretend. Yeah, I can pretend. Yeah, I but it will be a slick top vehicle, so. Yeah. Yeah, so we're not going to light on top of it. We'll reward the lights to come and say, <coughs> I actually sold my old white bar to the fire department. We just haven't vouched it out yet. So. We're kind of home for it for one of the big trucks, so, so we were able to kind of brought Peter to pay Paul and come up with what we need to do. So. That's all we need to do, just let you know where the people. The grassland management thing. I had visited with this guy in person, my cat and I did get called. I went out and visited one of the locations, which was just right east of Hudson. And his wording about, you know, winds of 24 hours. I said, well, we need to use common sense. I mean, if we know that the foreseeable future that the winds are going to come up within the next two days after our burn, then we probably need to take some extra effort. But I said, if you're burning grass and you're doing it the right way, your burn should be out by the time that you're done. But okay. So. We do have another <clears throat> last Tuesday after I contacted all three of you <laughs> due to the dry weather. Uh, we got paged out at 4.30 in the afternoon for a fire on the very west edge of Cobera. Mm -hmm. That was not called into the sheriff's office. I visited with the landowner, and the landowner told me that he had uh, sent his hired hand out there to do some work on the farm, which included burning the rush pot. And I asked the landowner if he had a firm permit, he said he did. And I said, I asked if they uh, contacted the sheriff's office, and he said, no, we didn't. So, this is just the cost. It's going to be up to you guys what you want me to do. If you want me to go forth with a with a bill to this gentleman, or want me to write a nice little letter say, "Thou shall do better in the near future," and if not, we will revert your revoke your burning privileges. This is not the first time. What was the policy? I mean, the policy is to call it. Policy is to notify and to the sheriff's office. To have a permit number, he has. He had a permit he knows the rules. He had, he had, he had a permit number. But he knows the rules. He knows yes. the rules. He signed off the agreement like every, everybody else. And this is not the first time last year at the exact same time. They called a fire in, but you're supposed to stay there when it's controlled burning. They left, went to Great Bend, and it went out of control. And I got part of that in my head. And, and when Steve was here, we had to go put out the fire. When it went, when he called it West Edge, the roads all separated from the grass. That's all it was. And by the time we got out there, the winds had just hit up. We were able to knock out the head fire real quick. So we spent quite a while out there mopping up stuff to make sure we didn't have to come back. So it got out of control. And it did. Andy wasn't there. And he didn't take the actual landowner wasn't there, but, but the uh, person that oh. lit the fire was there. The person that lit the fire ended up calling the lantern and said, I think I missed So your up. total cost would be at least $2 million to get it? Yes. Correct. Yes. And it's just a, basically it's a recost of a recover of man hours and yeah. a five gallon bucket of five on the phone. I think it'd be good to remember. I do too. <laughs> I mean, send, send the bill. bill. Send the bill. Send the bill. Okay. We'll get it taken care of. At least you call them. Yeah, we understand fire's getting out of control. 
doesn't call well, it. Well, yeah, but, but I mean, you if don't, you don't call, call it in. I mean, you totally yeah. disregard the rules like everyone else has to abide by. Yeah. yeah. And we wouldn't have known anything about it, except for Mike and I and Frank, where my other firefighters were sitting in my driveway looking to the east at the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Mike goes, auto check. I and he gets over this about, there was no one out here with it. And then he had to do a little bit further driving around out there. And said, there's someone here. And he said, yeah, it's out of control. So we need to get something over there. So, okay. But no one was watching the burn. They didn't bother to call it in. Yeah. Got, My main concern is had they called in, they had known at noon that day, we put in, we're not allowing in the burning for your guys' permission. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, we have people burning now, which we've had enough moisture that we're not. I'm not too worried about it, so. Got anything else? It could have been a lot worse. It, it <laughs> very well, because I was really, they happened to call me, you want me to call Bill from Provera? I said, no, just hang on, let me, let me get out of here, let's see what we got. And had it jumped through Provera, I mean, there would have been no way to catch it. It had been well over into Reno County before we could even go stop it. So, yeah, we're very, very lucky. We uh, had our structure fire Monday morning and there was something we do that I mean it's two trailer homes, middle of the country, middle of the night, and you get everything working against you. It started raining again, which I thought that would have helped, but no. <laughs> but we had Safford Elm that blocked off for a big fire pole, so we had to take secondary roads to get there. I ended up losing a I believe it's a clutch out of a truck at my station. We're going to tow it over to Jerry's this afternoon and he's going to give us a plus to know what we're going to do. It's, it is becoming a problem. This is not the first bus that's ever been in this truck. Yeah, this is yeah. one of the B20s, or B10, B10. It's very, very high. B10, B8, it's, it's all over the place. Yeah. We have replaced clutches in every one. We've had everything the worst the trucks mm -hmm. imaginable that we have gotten in. We didn't know it at the time because it was a little bit of a problem. Yeah. But the, they just don't hold it. Sand. Yeah. I just, it kills me. So, it may be a possibility that we'd be looking at speccing another truck to nurse along as much as we can. Maybe one of them, we'd get rid of it and we go buy another spot. And, you know, I, I like having a little brush truck for little spots, but if I can put a 510 in the same area and not have a problem out of it, I'm going to do the logical thing there and get a 510. Plus, I can carry more water. But we're still going to have a truck in the mix yet when Jerry gets done with his. So it, it may all work itself out. We'll, we'll see. But just to let you guys know where, where we're sitting at. So if you see yeah. a big bill. Yeah. Speaking of brush trucks, you know, one time you discussed about the air intake on those trucks of extending, you know, some kind Street of a, up, above. up above. Because remember, we lost that one down south mm -hmm. in the stubble fire, and it was, it was the smoke that choked the engine out. Yeah. It couldn't move, it burned up. I've been on that, on that floor. Yeah, that was Jerry's floor over there. But is there a kit, or would, it, would it have I something have to be made to. We would probably, Jerry would be the one to tell us. I mean, Jerry would be the one to say, yeah, you can do this and reroute this, and, and it may take care of it. I mean, it's just something we're going to have to, to look into. Of course, we obviously don't have the problem with, with the big trucks mm -hmm. because everything sets up some much higher. So it's something we need to look into for sure so we know. So we need to to your right off the front. Yeah, and I, and I know that Great Empire has had a couple problems. They bought two uh, Ford diesel brush trucks and have had a couple problems with little seconds in there and they've been able to bypass it. So I have to talk my way. I was like, okay, how'd you guys do this? No. I think it's possible, it's just a matter of you know, how we're gonna do it. So and other than the clutch, this truck that is fine. I mean I, I, this truck will get up speed right down the road. I mean you actually have got to pay attention to what you're doing because it'll get away from you. And it's employment, you don't want to stick someone in that's never broke. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so Davin has some information on a grant that we uh, <coughs> have applied for that we have not heard back on. We wrote into the uh, BFA Grand Volunteer Firefighters Association grant through Forestry. It's a 50% match by way of reimbursement. Um, so we'd have to front the total cost and then they re reimburse us back 50% up to $4,998. Um, 
we wrote in for for remote control monitors. Volunteer, it seems like uh, people's time gets more and more important. So this would have potentially take a two-person operation truck with remote control monitor and make it a one-person operation truck. And, but they are very expensive. I've got I put out for four clothes, I've got two back. So <laughs> I can make um, copies here for you guys in case these are the ones that we do have back so far. The one, the first one, is a TFD through Weiss, and it's considerably more more expensive than one of um, the the hybrid for the NES is. The nice thing about the Akron nozzles is they are rebuildable by us. We can order parts, we'll send them out, we can rebuild them. The TFT nozzles, we actually have to take part, send them in to TFT and they are there. So the TFTs are more expensive and could potentially be even more expensive if we have to turn our car to send them in. So, but I'm still waiting on the other two back. I did talk with Ross Hawk. The reason we haven't heard anything about the grant money yet is um, he's waiting to receive the funds into his office, and then he said once he receives the funds, it'll be we'll try to use how we will get letters sent out. Um, I talked to him last Monday, I believe, and he said, though he can't say for sure if we wrote in for remote control nozzles with the description we gave as to why, he ranks that right up there with wildland gear and stuff like that, and it's probably a 85% guarantee that we'll probably get to Is that true to stay? It's true. Yeah, I can't score sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. possible. <laughs> <laughs> but from my understanding, talking to them, it's also possible if we do get this grant and there are most left available. It's a simple email back to Andrew Sportsbury. They have money available. Yeah, we have money available. We'll send you more money. This is something on down the road we we're trying to get these on our big trucks. I mean, I, I think it would be beneficial on our bigger trucks. We were, I think this one here would be the cost of basically be two. Two, yeah. And we basically buying one and getting the other one for free. So, it was something that, it was last minute we, Davin stumbled across it, brought it to me, and I said, yeah, go ahead and put in for it. I said, if we get it, we'll deal with it. So, the only one that I didn't want to pull, put in for it, and then we not have any, uh, well, we didn't know about it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we he actually worked with us, and when we found out about it, we were actually kind of the deadline by day. And we said, if you can get something to you can send it to us real quick, we'll so accept it. You think you're going to get two more bids in? You're going to get two more bids in, you think? I put out for them. I'm hoping to hear back. I'm going to get a hold of them again and find out why we haven't got our bids yet. Mm -hmm. That's where I wanted to keep you in the loop about that. I mean, we won't obviously know if we get the money for a while yet. So, when we do, it's mm -hmm. something we'll bring up to you guys and you guys decide how you want us to, to receive it.
the same. Okay. You got one of ones that somehow got. Okay, it, it's right, it's right, I'm sorry. We had to snap through to get some packets out. And I just wanted to make sure. Because some of the requests went out and had a zero in it. Oh, that's <laughs> well, yeah. That's good. Hey, the counties, yeah, we're fine. Yeah, we're going to trash them for them. <laughs> That was great. They don't put that. Oh my God. I don't know how it got out of the office, but and I'm quite frankly I'm not sure they did because I haven't seen one yet, but we thought they did. So anyway. Well, I'm Mark and I'm president CEO of SDSI, Southwest Developmental Services Incorporated. And I've been coming here now since 2004 when we added these five counties and put an officer in the um, The request that we've done now for years here, a number of years, when we combined the two local finance plans, because at first we kept 13 counties in the southwest quarter separate from the five counties here and then we combined it. And that, and that local finance plan, I'll explain it just here just a moment a little bit further, but I'm sure you all uh, may or may not recall it, but, but anyway, it's, it's money that we share with, uh, for the most part, most of the money goes to our providers to help them out with a number of things, mainly transportation. But you can see the 18 counties we serve here, we're using 2012 census data and the percentage of the population for the request for the request for population. The CDO administration is the same for county. We're required to do the same thing for every county. We're there for folks when they come and, and uh, we go out and uh, they think they, they might be eligible. They might have a family member who's eligible to do eligible for determination paperwork and uh, set all that up with them. We also do referrals. Uh, for instance, they are eligible and services. Target case management is a service that they don't have, there's not a waiting list. So we can give them a referral if they want that. They can choose whoever they want in their area to, to do that, uh, provide that service. Day residential and home supports, there's a waiting list for when that comes available. Of course, again, we are the ones that talk to them about their, their choice and their uh, choice options counselor. But the request for the population here in uh, Stafford County, we've got the 88, 89 for CDO administration, 21, 188, $30,077, which is the same as we asked for last year. You know, the numbers here have not changed for years. We've not increased, we've not decreased, it's just been the same. That's, that's what we're doing. The next page actually shows you what we do with that money. And that local finance plan um, is made up of county mail, and it's also made up of state aid, which is discretionary money that we get. CDO, Community Development Office, Federal Organization, and the state. So we take that money and put it in one pot. And then we use it to trans as usual, the transportation subsidies, the big ticket item. We're projecting, of course, you can see between 13 and, and 14, there's a little bit of decrease in the funding. So we adjust that accordingly. Uh, there's a few items there that you can see. Other, other things, the adult services, I want to point out that there at the bottom, the bottom row right for the total, is we use county money exclusively in this area right here. We have folks who are eligible for services for the criteria the state of Kansas does, but they're not eligible for Medicaid waiver. The state of Kansas used to give us state grant funds only for these folks. And they quit doing that. I can tell you now, it's been five or six years ago, but what you to do in across the state, I think they cut it in half the next year, 7.5, something like that. But it was down to 3 million, and then it's, it's gone. Mm -hmm. I don't ever expect to see it back. So what we do with these folks is we'll go out and do a needs assessment. Based on that needs assessment, they might be, need 10, 15 hours, 20 hours a week, whatever it is, to get help, for instance, with budgeting, help with food preparation, help with where, any number of things that, that, that they need to help with. And we really feel it's a good we get our bang for the buck because we're serving 12 people with that 100,000 now. And that's, that is much cheaper than Medicaid work. I think the average of Medicaid work is serving like 37,000 per person per year. So that's how we use the money right there in total. Uh, the next five pages is that local finance plan spelled out. This is the plan from January 1 through June 30th of 2014. And we do this over six months. We, we take a look at it. We get input from our providers. And it hasn't changed much at all. The only thing that has changed is when we have a change in funding. And of course, the state A is on a state fiscal year, July 1 through June 30th. The county is on a county year, January 1 through June 30th, December 31st. And that's when we revisit this over six months. If that funding changes, we have adjust this accordingly. And 
we spend the money that we pay it out to providers or we, that we use in the city of budget uh, some administration dollars. And we asked for 160, I think last year we actually ended up using about 90. If we, if we don't use it, then it, if we don't feel like we need it, then we put it over into that local finance plan right here and they get the, the, the advantage of having that money. And it's per month per person they serve for each one of these subsidized categories. So if someone's serving 30 people and they're providing day services, any residential services on transportation, they build the entire thing. Yeah. There he is. We got started early, Jerry. That's all right. <laughs> it means you'll be done early. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we all know Jerry Max, I'm sure he's your <laughs> board representative here for Stafford County. We're on the page now talking about the providers. Just look through the local plans. And the provider page here, these are the community service providers that individuals have choices to, to uh, receive services from. And we categorize this per city in which they're primarily located. And you can see Garden City, Great Bend, and then a few others. We have Liberal, Dodge, Elkman, Lincoln, Major, Elvis, so on. So there, there's a number of choices that individuals have. They don't, if they don't like the services at one place, they can go somewhere else. It's, it's something that does happen. It's not something that happens all the time. Not everybody's going back and forth, but it does happen. Folks can make a decision, and or their guardian makes a decision that let's try over here because we're not really satisfied with the provider that makes a provider. The next page there's duties and responsibilities that SDSI performs as a community. I don't know if this is the organization. This page is exactly the same as it had been for years, except for the first bullet. The only thing that changed is on, has changed on the end through the years has been the number of individuals in our area. That has gone up. We're over 1,100 now. 650 individuals received residential day and home supports. 327 received case management. Organizational chart on the next page, board of directors, and the said jury should be represented from here. Myself included, there's a total of 10 staff, seven in the Garden City office, three in the Great Bend office. Um, one of them in the Great Bend office is part time, so we have, have nine full time staff and one part time staff. The next page used to have, it was a complete page that was full, but it no longer is, and I'll explain that in a moment. But the first box there is what has been in there for years. And you can see back in 2005, it was the first calendar year we had 18 acres. So we went back that far uh, and, and give you some history here of the number of individuals who have applied for services, those who have been determined eligible or not eligible, and then some who just files close to the never and they start the process. But then for some reason, we'll, and we'll, we'll send things out to them, we'll call them uh, to talk to them or try to visit with them about the fact that you started this process but you haven't finished it. So sometimes they just don't. So that's the file closed. The rest of this page used to be full of the waiting list. The waiting list is now strictly a state waiting list. We don't have anything to do with it other than the fact that we're the ones that determine somebody eligible. When they're eligible with the services, then we do the paperwork with them. When the case manager does, it's turned into us. We enter into the database for them. We used to be able to keep a local list and allocate money out per 27 CDOs. And that's the next page of the map. So much per CDO area. And we would go down the list and start talking to folks. Funding's available to you on services. Sometimes they said no, they're not ready for it for whatever reason it may be. At that point in time, a lot of the prior years, we were able to keep that money and then go on our local list and announce it the next one. That doesn't happen if the state goes down the list. They use the date that someone is eligible and they have requested services to start. So, we were trying to think what else could we put in here. We want to just throw something in there just for that goes, so not much there. Is there any reason why uh, you have a decrease yeah, we don't over know. the years? We don't know because, and, and the same thing happens in the early I would think it would be the reverse. Yeah, but it, it, early intervention, for instance, uh, the children. Mm -hmm. They experience the same thing. We don't, we just, we don't know. Mm -hmm. 
there's just a number of number of folks that that, that uh, request services and or request uh, eligibility for services and we do that determination. And why I don't know. And, and by the way, that 2014 figure, of course, is only three or twenty. Right, right. So, but the rest no, of it's like the thirteen. Yeah, we had quite a decrease from twelve to thirteen. Right. But you go back and look from from, from 05 to 06, we went from one forty to one twenty seven. Mm -hmm. My best guess would be a, just strictly a census deal, because in 2010 I did the census, and I know a lot of the western edge went to the east side of Kansas, and that happens. Mm -hmm. Those people might move to the east side of Kansas. Okay. Well, I was, that's the way. I, that's what I'm thinking. If they're not in your area, <clears throat> then they're not. They're not in Kansas. Yeah. 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 And I think through the early intervention programs, and in 19 County, there's two. There's Russell Child Development Center and 13 in our southwest corner. And here in Central Kansas, uh, some of our diversified does that. But I think another thing that has happened through the years, we see very few nowadays where the parents, with the adult child is 40 or 50 years old, and the parents are now to the point, and we need to know about it. And the parents are to the point where we can no longer care for the child, and the 40 or 50 year old child. We don't see it happening. It used to happen much more often. I've been in this the best design for almost 23 years now. We would see, and we had no clue that this person was out because they never been brought into us. We never done an eligibility determination, and sometimes they got very difficult because there may not be the paperwork to back all that. But we still have the ability to determine whether it's eligible just based upon some testing. See, what I like to believe is the early intervention is working. It is. Yeah. It is. I mean, you know, to what degree sometimes, I mean, there are children, of course, born that right, right up front, you know, that they're going to be lifelong, in need of lifelong support and services. And there's others that early intervention works are very well for, and yeah, if you get to them early, it does work. So, yeah, we're seeing that. That's happening too. Yeah. yeah. And it's a good investment of money. It's a very good investment of mm -hmm. money to get the children there. Because if we don't, you know, once they're in our system, you know, at that point it's pretty much been determined that they're in need of lifelong supports and services. Of course, if you get them younger, many times, and I don't recall, I don't know what the big percentage is now, but many of those children will catch up with their peers and be in pre So, yeah, I think that's right. I think it's well. The last page in the packet there is the map of the state of Kansas, and um, these are the 27 CDU areas and, and the, the counties they cover, uh, one over 21, only because it's an alphabetical order, it wasn't even one. Anyway, uh, those are the 27, that's how it's set out right now. So. Um, Jerry, do you have anything to add? You already talked money? Yeah. Hey, yeah. 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 do you want they to jump in? Go, yeah. 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 They're going to write a check. Yeah. 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 Probably the only comment I would have on the monies is that uh, about four years ago we went to a different uh, philosophy of how to ask for the money. And uh, I was opposed to it. I was the only one who voted against it. Mark will tell you that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, traditionally, Stafford has always held her end of the uh, pot and uh, basically uh, we get let, we, Stafford County gives less money now than they did before 2005, because at that time you gave some part of her uh, for early education. Now it's split. You give so much for early education, and you give so much for the CDPO. And, uh, you know, I just encourage you to maintain what you've given and tell you how much we really appreciate the money that you do give us. You know, as I said, I think it really does enhance the ability of our providers oh, yeah. to provide transportation to get folks around, you know, to have a fleet of vehicles or, or you know, so we have some smaller providers too that 
don't have a fleet, but they have a few vehicles. It helps them to, to put fuel in the vehicles, maintain the vehicles, and keep vehicles that are safe and, 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 and fairly new, new and not new, but fairly new. And get folks around to shopping excursions, to if they have a job or a day program or a, recreational activities. It really, I know it does help. And, and I, we really truly believe in our area that we are blessed in the fact that our 18 counties do a pretty good job. You know, I don't have to point some out here because <laughs> you can look and see it for yourself. But there, there are some that essentially have said we're looking to get outside agencies off the tax roll. And, you know, we're fighting that as best we can, but, but it's, you know, we have no leverage to really force them to do anything. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's a relationship between the county, the counties and the state counties. It's more good to see you know, the county has to um, appoint us, and then the state has to approve that. They pay the kick in the doing this what we did back in 2005, 2004, when we added these five counties. So, you know, we, we, we do our best to tell our story, um, and board members come in, and, um, you know, it, it just, Three counties have benefited the most from the woods. <coughs> Third county actually has done pretty good, but the other two counties have benefited the most from having all the providers there. The payroll, you know, those providers are located there. They're either buying the building, they're either paying leases, they're buying local, you know, office equipment, fuel, everything else that they do. The shopping excursion, excursion that folks go on, because they live there. Most, most, of our, most of the folks that receive services live in those three communities. Mm -hmm. Either Liberal, Great Bend, or Garden City. So those three communities, by far, get the most money. Now I do understand that there's tough times with the state mandates coming down to the counties, and it just seems like they're rolling downhill. And you know, the county has to determine what they're going to do. But we, we really appreciate what you have. And Jerry's right. Back in 2004, I can't remember the year that we changed the local finance plan. That's when we changed how we asked for. And that was a few years later. But back in 2004, I'm thinking about 60,000 mm -hmm. or so. Y'all, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Stafford County game. Part of that went to the early intervention, and part to 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 us that we use this way. And we do not provide services. Uh, you know, we have that list of affiliates I showed you that, that do that. We do administrative work. We do the call insurance. We do the eligibility determination. We do the options counseling. We do the annual basis assessments. Every individual that's on the HCS ID waiver has to have an annual assessment. We do this for all the folks. So our staff of 10, including myself, does that. For, we don't do it for all the folks on the waiting list, but we do it for that 650 and, 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 and some other folks. So we do it for them. So any questions? How do those counties just uh, arbitrarily come up with what they're doing? I don't know. I don't know because actually, like Phoenix County, you know, I know Phoenix got to get a hundred and seventy-five or something like that. And they're making you know, close to two hundred thousand in Bart County. When we were not the CEO, we were not there yet. I know they cut that big time for air mill, the the mental health, which I can't think of the name of. Uh, and, and this, her own health got some back. I say her own health, it's not her own health, it's mental health. They're a great deal. And we never really got restored back to that degree. But it was cut prior to us coming in under that. We just we, we were looking back in the past when some of our diversified was deceived on that. We had to make that 50% of it in one year. What happened that year was Mark County had a loss of tax revenue. Well, yes, basically. And they cut the sheriff's department, the health department, and then these entities like us. And the next year they restored the sheriff and the health and brought back some money, but not all to the full place where it had been before. Of course, at that time there was a lot of stuff between Sunflower and Rosewood and not the commissioners were taking sides up there and, you know, just part of the game. But uh, that was the main reason they cut it that time, just to just loss of revenue for the county. And they had to do something. They didn't, they didn't have it fixed. 
spin, so you got to cut somewhere. That was the two main places to cut was the sheriff's office and the health department up there at that time. And Bart County will make, we have a good relationship with Richard Beckman and Bart County. We ended up having meetings. I think one year went four times last year, the year before Cameron College. But it was brought on by some things in the background done by the variety of the community. So they wanted some answers to some questions, so I came in and answered those questions. They may have made sure that they point out when they awarded Last year, I went into the request later on and had the budget hearing and awarded the contract to us. You know, the, and, and we did send two contracts, I believe, that you should have received. That they're a fill in the blank that when you got way off, made a determination of what the department is filled in, the executive sent them to us, we'll execute and send them back. But anyway, they, they made sure, like for instance, last year, they made sure that we understood that. That we're not cutting the CDO and we're paying SDSI for what they do, and they're very satisfied with that. But when they cut, they're cutting over here at the provider side. Which, I mean, it doesn't make me feel any better. I mean, the good, you know, the, the, it does make me feel good to have a good relationship with them, and, and, and they're not, they are not having problems that they had. But it does make me feel good that they're cutting the side that really you know, we can do what we do. We have to have money to do that. But they're, you know, the folks who provide the services also need. And on the board, we also had three or four active county commissioners. So they're up to what's going on, and, and they understand there's that. Call one from Pawnee, one from Barton, first Mike from uh, Hamilton County, and then uh, Shannon uh, Dillard from uh, uh, Stanton. And Donna Pelton from Harvard. So, yeah. Yeah. Kenny yeah. Sherman. Yeah. 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 And they sometimes ask these questions to the Finney County. They'll also they'll tell them about the fact that hey, they visit with the Finney County Commissioner or two and ask them, what's going on here? Why aren't you guys home here? They were never, never satisfied with the answer they gave. <laughs> Well, anyway, anyway uh, again, we appreciate what y'all have done through the years we've been here. And, and the years prior to that, the health individuals who have been watching the this bill has received what we think is an enhanced, gives the providers the enhanced ability to provide those services that they may not have just with Medicaid rates. I don't think they've received a Medicaid rate increase now for five or six years. I don't know about y'all, but it seems to me like cost of living, they're kind of a little bit of increase in the so. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.
typically would come, but I live in Pratt, and I've been on the board for 26 years, so they think occasionally I ought to get out. And do oh, okay. So, All right. So you got me. You got the B team, definitely. Hi. And, uh, and Bob told me that I should wait till you come get me. So I didn't come try to bust no, down right, wrong, or indifferent. Was that yeah. wrong? No, that's all right. All right. I will quickly take you through this, and we can spend as much time as you want or as little. And if you test me too much, you probably will uh, get coming to a button to convey and get back to you. Okay. Uh, in your booklet, uh, it's pretty much the same thing we do every year. The first cover memo uh, talks about Great Plains and the fact that we cover southwest Kansas. We have 28 counties. We go from our counties, your county, my county, west to the state line. So we have a fairly large area that we try to cover. Um, Obviously, Great Plains is a certified development company, and they're also an economic development district. Um, this gives you a recap on the first section, except that we made a mistake. I don't think you have a Rush County Metro in your yeah. county. Yeah. I'm sure that it should be something with uh, Stafford in it. Um, we partner with Network Kansas. There are a lot of different revolving loan funds that cover our area. What we've done in your county most recently, in the last two years, are CDBG uh, block grants for uh, the city of Stafford mm -hmm. on their electrical, and I think that's to maybe three total. The grant part was about $800,000, and that's where they furniture keep and, and this certainly I hope helped uh, in that regard. Um, and I didn't know you could get them two years in a row back to back, but obviously it was an ongoing project and it's I hope done a very good thing for Stafford. I think they're getting started. Are they? I, I, was, I think they had the engineering report and so on and so forth. The electrical system. Yes. She's you know, these were involved in those. The funding this year for block grants took longer because the feds drug their feet in mm -hmm. funding and funding. And Faye, I think, submitted four grants this year and got all four done. There's a whole page on grants. I have a problem with grambling. The page, this is a screen print of our online that you can get online and, and look at a lot of things that Great Plain does. And it really, if somebody wants a loan, they can get on this website and navigate through forums. And obviously, we would encourage them to call us first. And we will talk them through anything. But Bob likes to promote um, the online part of this. I'm old. I don't have a form anything. That's just me. Page one in your packet is specifically on community development block grants. Um, and when I was reading through this, uh, it was a $500,000 maximum. And the fact that Stafford got two four hundred thousands in a row, I thought was good. I'm not close to it. was doing what it should for Stafford. But it tells you and recaps for you all the different things that you could use CDBG programs for. Um, because of state funding, we always encourage people, if you've got a need, to tell us early so we can get applications in as soon as possible. Uh, I think all the census work has been done. Uh, maybe that is specific to the city, but phase very good getting much done. And I'm guessing you all know Bob, you know Faye. Bob is the co-director with Faye. Yes. Um, he he was here. Two years ago? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I had it. Okay. Um, you know, Patty left um, three years ago, and, and 
Robin Hayes King, co-directors, and uh, I retired from a bank in Pratt in 2011, so I go and help some. And with 28 counties and four people, that's a lot to mm -hmm. cover. So they enlist me to come do these things. But I, it's fun, and uh, I have some friends in the area, that, in the banks, and I'm going to go call them. And we always try to get around and see what we can do to help in all regards. But you've got two pages on community development block grants. Uh, the next page is a recap of all the different loan programs that if you have anybody in your county or cities that needs loans, there's all kinds of loan activity that can be used to help them. Um, they told me that there's a need for daycare here and on the community development block grants. Here's daycare could be one qualifying. So, um, any need that you have, we would encourage you to ask us and we'll see if we can be helpful to you. Um, next page is a recap of the projects from pretty much the inception of Great Plains to the current of projects we've done in Stafford County. And some of them go back a long way, but it's the way the form's always been done. But the primary is the electrical projects. And after this year's work, will that be done? I would mean, presume so. I didn't know if it would need. I think it's a third go round. From what I was told, I thought that project was going to start pretty soon. Good. Good. Um, what was the cabinet figure? You know, I'm not sure it's been too far back for me to know. I don't know which one of the feet ones it would be. I was afraid you had some milk. Yes. Surprising. Of course, it was 28 years ago. Yeah. yeah. A long time ago. Yeah. Long time ago. And of course, on the form, it never tells you how they turned out, if they turned out good or bad. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, they turned out good. Mm -hmm. Now, there's something there I would surprise. Surprising. Mm -hmm. And the grand total is the total of all funds, not just great plans. Okay. It's like the electrical projects that I know the most about. That two million three great plans has come up with 800,000, or helped come up with it. State, but it's still necessary, and obviously we can try to help you with anything we can. Sort of the point. And the next page is just the general membership and who represents uh, on the Great Plains Board and who are the members. And we always we take more members with Stafford County. I know he's still huh. on the board. Is he? Yeah, and uh, so we probably need to come up with somebody to replace okay. Kim. I don't know if Kim owns any ground in this county. I'm not sure. Is he still okay in this area? I've never, I haven't seen Kim for a year or two around here. I know he stays busy. He farms pretty big up in Reno County where he grew up. But his father passed away, so oh, he yeah. he's picked up some of Dad's. And Kim's two sons, one of the sons is back working for him, uh, or working with him. He's a crop consultant, so it works out huh. pretty nice. Well, we would take volunteers, yeah. <laughs> and if you're okay with Kim, we'll just leave Kim until you come up with somebody that you can con into this. We meet once a month, and usually it's by telephone, and uh, we have 11 board members, and 
it can be involved some months, and some months it's very simple. So if you think of anybody you want to, if you want to put Shane into it, <laughs> would he be mad? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. A lot of these, I mean, your membership, uh, a lot of them are commissioners. Yes. I recognize it. Oh, I figured. We used to have, when Patty did this, we had a report on all the counties and all the activities that we had in all those counties, but mm -hmm. whether it adds anything to Stafford County, all it might do is make you wonder why this county got more than you did, and it just comes down to projects. We'd love to do as much as we can here. And you know Faye well enough to know that she'd be tickled. She wants grant applications. That's her bread and butter. And then the last page is our plea for you to be a continuing member of Great Plains Development. We think the fees are a little bit over thousand dollars for this year. We get funds from the EDA, we get funds from SBA. You know, Pompeo, in the last I heard, is trying to get rid of EDA. They'll try to get rid of SBA next. So our memberships from our county is very important to us because that funding all changes. State of Kansas funds a little bit on our activity based on how many loans we do in our region. And uh, the state, I'm not real sure what the states. One month they're flush, and the next month they don't have any money. So who knows what? You guys might know better than I what's going to happen in our state. I don't think it's going to be quite as dire as they say. But I hope not. I sort of like it. Although I don't, you know, our income tax. I think if you make more than $9,000, you don't pay anything. Or you pay up to 9000 I don't know how that'll work, but I guess we'll see. Well, they got a lot more money in reserves than they had six years ago. Okay, they that it was down to zero. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but they don't, you don't ever read that in the paper. Oh, no. We never, it's never good news. It's only bad news. Is Stafford County flush? No. We have very little debt, so. Well, that's a very positive. Well, yes, it's increased a little bit, and all the ground got reappraised, so you have the opportunity to collect more money, but it's from the same people. So, sure. You know, I don't want to do that. No, if you can, but you've got to fund, and you've got to maintain, and get a hold of the federal level, roads and bridges. It was on the news this morning. It's a problem. And we're going to have Hey, the Federal Highway Fund. Yes. Yeah. I think about the bridge in Minneapolis that collapsed on I-35. <laughs> Last I read, Kansas was number one or two on highways. And we've always taken a good care of our roads. So, if you go any direction from here, it's worse. So, yeah. You cross the state line into Colorado, <laughs> New Mexico, yes. Oklahoma. My wife's from Oklahoma. Uh, two lane road and all of a sudden there's no it's if you go off the road there's nowhere to go. And I think it would be so bad. Oh, that was terrible. My daughter yeah. lives in Cincinnati, Ohio and there it gets worse the further it used to go. Horrible mind and interstates. Yeah, we'd have a fit around there if it was rough like it is right there. Of course it gets a lot more traffic too. They, they beat them up a lot faster than they do. I suppose that's true, but more traffic. I live on 54 and there's a lot of traffic. Yeah. And 50 has a lot of traffic to me. But I guess that's a product of being in a small town. We're getting more traffic, yeah. But that's good. It's getting more traffic, too. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, if, if I can answer questions, I'd be happy to. You don't test me too bad. 
And I believe you've always been remembered, sir. Sure. Mm -hmm. As far as I know. Okay. And trust me, you get phase expertise for your <laughs> membership, not money. Okay. But she continues to work with me. You would think you'd have quite a few bankers on your board of directors, but you're, I mean, Ken, that you do have. Ken, I, I was a banker for 40 years. But and there's not too many bankers on, on there. Um, the EDA, Economic Development Administration in Denver, came out and dictated that we had to have so many, uh, I don't want to say minorities, but all these groups that they yeah. want us to have, and educators, and Roger DeGarmo is in Meade County. I don't know if anybody would know Roger. He's the economic development director for the county. And we had a hard time getting him approved by EDA, and you would think the economic development people would be who you would want. So that's why we don't have as many bankers as we used to. Craig Neeland from Great Bend, if you know Craig, uh, he's on there. And so at one time we had three of 11 that were, and, but we have to placate the government. You probably never had that problem here, <laughs> do you? Yeah. Huh. And they want minorities to be brought in. Oh, we do. And um, we've got a variety of categories. And that's fine. It's just having people on there that will be active. And uh, so it's a challenge. But we want, you know, part of what I'm going to do today is call on all the banks in the area to remind them of what we do and that we would like to help them on any project that we can. That's the point of great place to go. So if they try to recruit somebody, they shouldn't try to recruit a banker. But the other positions start to come. Uh, if, you uh, if you had a banker that you thought would be great, we'd be happy okay. to. Okay. I don't know. You know, what you guys are Chad, thinking. Chad, Chad would be good. He was, was my first That thought. was my thought, too. He could go to the St. John National. He might ask Chad. Chad Fisher. Okay. He kind of looks, I mean, he's involved in a lot of stuff mm -hmm. like that, but he, he, he would do good. The C is pretty active. I S C H. S H. No C in it. No C. No C. Um, if you're kidding, Pratt is married to Nikki Fisher, that's Fisher Farms, oh, yeah. somewhere in this area. Nicole Fisher, yeah. Uh, Maybe Greg. Greg Fisher. Greg. That has a C in it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's Greg. <laughs> he's, he's a banker. <laughs> Why did I say yeah, that? Yeah. Well, I thought he was at Hudson. He was. He, he's, he's not, not there. Not okay. Is there a story there? That... I don't know. Okay. Well, that was UMB. The bank got bought out. Yeah. I think he's still with you. UMB. He's in UMB, UMB, but he doesn't go to Hudson every day. He does, yeah. Uh, Somebody told me that there's a real nice banking facility there. At Hudson? Yeah. At Hudson. Is that? It's all right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I can't believe they all get sold out. Oh. In Pratt, we had a bank that was Bank 4 out of Wichita, and then it sold seven or eight times. I wanted to be the sign concession for these people nationwide because they just change yeah, yeah. all the time. It was awful. American State bought out another bank in yeah. Holcomb. So now i got to change my account number because the other guy had more money in his account, Don Bowman. He had more money, so I get, I'm the one that gets to change my account. You're kidding. <laughs> no. More activity, more money. <laughs> Two of us have ident identical, so I've got to change my account. Are they going to pay for your new checks and your new yep. everything? Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, they've grown and grown and grown. Honestly, I'll have the checks ordered for you, and we'll take care of that. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you, son. Do you want it? Well, we need a motion to go ahead and join. I move that we go ahead and join Great Plains Development. I'll second it. All in favor of the motion to join Great Plains Development, say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you very much. Please. 
the way Faye knows I showed up. <laughs> well, I panicked on the way up here thinking that it was like 10 or 10.30. I won't admit to speeding, but I, <laughs> but I was tickled when I got here and found out I had a little more time. It's always a good thing. Thank you very much. And obviously, anything we can do to help, please. Well, we were told uh, earlier today that we might be in need of an ambulance in a year or two. So. <laughs> well, he's just finishing one in a fire truck, so she would be tempted to do that. And obviously, the sooner you decide to do it, the sooner she gets you in. Is it for St. John or is it for the county? It's for Canada County, County, but it's based out of St. John. It'd be based in St. John. Unless we get a little pin well out there and generate some electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Well, hopefully you never have to use it. Again, questions and anything we can do while we're okay. Okay. Nice to meet all of you. Yeah. Okay, well, enjoy uh, Stafford County today. Well, I will. To me, this kind of stuff is fun. <laughs> but, you know, not everybody thinks that, <laughs> to say the least. But okay. Marissa Mansell works at one of the banks. And uh, she worked with me at Brad for a long time. Oh, yeah, she was she and I assume the kids we always talked about are probably in high school or out. I think she has one that's a eighth grader. She's got one over in the Oh, does she? Yeah, in the football. Uh, he's he got a sophomore and junior. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is amazing to me. Yeah. Nick, yeah. Nick is a, probably going to be a junior next year. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Go see her and say hi. All right. Thank you. Yep, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Sure. Nice, nice to meet uh -huh. you. Well, nice to meet you. that's always a concern with me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Well, adjourned.